Once in a lifetime, in your aviation career, something like this might come along. Today, we are taking delivery of the very first Gamebird GB1 here in the UK. It's the first one of its type into the UK. We're gonna unload it, we're gonna put it together, we're gonna to certify it and fly it on out of here. Stay tuned, you don't wanna miss it. Nice, I like. Yeah, when you jump in, you just fly it in. Ah. <laughs> So here it is, it's arrived. It's the first one, did I mention it's the first? It's the first one in the UK. What we're gonna do, get the container off, get the airplane out, get the aircraft in the hangar. Here, here we have the proud new owners doing the honors, unleashing the beast. So as you can see, we've got the aircraft in the hangar behind us, getting ready for us to reassemble it. You might be wondering, how do we know how to put this thing together when it's the first one in the country? Well, as luck would have it, the factory have done the hard work for us and written us out a step-by-step -step plan on how to put it together. Right, let's go through the list and have a look. Install the elevators, install the rudder, Install the spinner. Push in left wing, leaving approximately four inch gap to connect the wing roots. Smoke hoses, fuel hoses, fuel selector, fuel sensor. Install cowling. Clean the entire airplane. And finally, conduct a pre-flight inspection in accordance with the aircraft flight manual. So as you can see, we've got tons to get on with. Let's go catch up with Gareth, see how he's getting on. <laughs> English is not his strong point. So one big advantage we have with reassembling this airplane is we've got Gareth here to give us a hand. What you might not know is Gareth was the head of production for the prototype here in the UK. I'll do. Production has since moved to America. Unfortunately for us, they left him behind and we're stuck with him. Let's see what he's up to so we can work through our list. What are you up to in there, Gareth? I was trying to get the main wing thing out. What's that? Titanium. Oh, that's that's be, that, was be, that was gonna be my oh, next right. question. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm here waiting for Gareth, you'll see that we've just connected up the electrical trim tab on the elevator. And I'm just waiting for Gareth to come and put the pin in. Oh, here he is, the hinge pin. Here we have the elevators on, all talked up, safe and secure, step one complete. The next most important thing we need to do down the back end is a duplicate inspection on the elevator installation and the rudder installation. That means a second set of eyes, a person who was authorized by the company to look over it, checking for correct locking, everything's in safety and full and free movement with no binding. Spinner is the next thing to go on, pretty simple task. However, you do want to get it in the right orientation. It's numbered one to line up with blade number one, not number two, three or four. Yeah, when well you jump in, we'll slide it in. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the wings into position. This aircraft is very unusual. It's a two-piece wing, very unusual for an aerobatic aircraft. So left wing first, make the connections, slide it into position, then the right wing. Let's crack on. That's it, hold it there. One very important job that's not on our list of things to do from the factory is to change the registration letters. At the moment, it's displaying an N number. That means the aircraft is registered in America. What we want to do is change it to a G registration. That means it's registered here in Great Britain. The registration is like a number plate for a car. As part of transferring the registration from NREG to GREG, we've had to reprogram the ELT, or Emergency Located Transmitter, with a new registration. What this does, in case of emergency or during a crash, it transmits the registration of the aircraft and its location. Transmits it in two ways. One, it can be set off manually by the pilot in the cockpit, or two, via an internal G-switch on impact. Let's get it fitted so we can get flying. 
nice and like. You might be wondering what this little gizmo is. It's an aerobatic sight gauge. What it's used for is when the pilot's pulling aerobatic maneuvers, he uses it as a reference marker on the horizon. Right. Battery on. Throttle open. Makes you fully rich. Prime for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Close the throttle. Mixture lean. Crack the throttle. Key on. Cross your fingers. Ah, bollocks. That's it. Ground run done. Cowlings are on. Aircraft is clean. No fluid leaks. And that's everything on our checklist complete. The next thing we need to do is wait for the last piece of the jigsaw. That's the certificate of airworthiness from the CAA. You never know, my beard might be back by then. Just joking, CAA. Till the next time. Till the next time. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you've enjoyed watching us put an aircraft together in eight to 10 minutes. If only it was that quick. Don't forget to check out our other videos. Hit the like, smash the subscribe, leave us a message below. I've been Dicko. Till next time. Stay tuned. I'm ATS. No, I'm not. I'm Dicko. I'm Dicko at ATS Aero, and we love what we do. Did you know who I am? Next, we're gonna put the wing on. Bit on you helicopters. I'm just going over it. <laughs> I'm just thinking. It's testing. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to watch our other video. A little bit of it. Come on. Then.